Right, section 4.4 is graphing the last of our functions, cosecant and secant. And these are really interesting. Um, they do have some asymptotes, but they're really unusual. So you're going to use a guide function. Its reciprocal is going to be a guide function. Those will be graphed with a dashed curve, and then the actual secant and cosecant will be um, will be a solid line. So let's move up just a little bit. I think it's just easier to do it rather than read about how to do it. So this is a, this is a confusing, I mean, it's a, a detailed one. So in Y1, well, that's if we were looking in the calculator. Let's don't, let's don't even worry about that right now. So this is what you're asked to graph y equals two-thirds cosecant parentheses x plus pi over four. So instead of worrying about graphing cosecant, we're going to graph two-thirds sine x plus pi over four. We know how to do that. We have a phase shift, so we take that argument and put it in between our period, which is two pi. There's not a number there, so it's just two pi. So we put this between zero and two pi, we solve for x, so we're going to subtract pi over 4 from both places. We end up with negative pi over 4 less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 7 pi over 4. So these are our upper and lower boundaries on the chart. Let me go right here to our chart. So negative pi over 4, 7 pi over 4. Then we build our line up here. x. We start out with x, then it's x plus pi over 4. Then it's sine of x plus pi over 4. And finally, it's 2 thirds sine x plus pi over 4. So at here, we're going to add pi over 4 to this. We get to 0. We get to pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Those should look familiar. We've seen them over and over again. The sine of these, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0 and then take two-thirds of this column, you get zero, two-thirds, zero, negative two-thirds, zero. We go to our graph, and we're gonna, we're gonna graph from negative pi over four to seven pi over four. And we're, when, when we're at negative pi over four, we're at zero. When we are at positive pi over four, we're at two-thirds. I made this be one, so I let three blocks be that. When we're at 3 pi over 4, we are at 0 again. Then we're at negative 2 thirds, and then we're back at 0. So this purple dotted line is the sign that we just graphed. That's the guide function. This is the guide. Oops. Okay, so that's the guide function. And that's dotted because it's not really the, the cosecant. So then we put in our uh, vertical asymptotes. These blue lines occur at the x-intercepts of the trig function that you just did. So going through here, going through here, and going through here, you put those as dotted lines. Then you go back and your actual cosecant is going to touch the max here but stay inside these blue lines. This piece over here is going to touch this low point and then go in and stay within those blue dotted lines. So the red here is actually cosecant. So we sketched sine, and then we put in our asymptotes, and then we actually got the pieces of the cosecant. And you would do secant the same way, except you would use cosine as your guide function. So let's go look at our problem set. All right, so number one says graph negative two cosecant x. So the guide function is negative two sine x. So I went to my calculator and I graphed negative two sine x and I got this blue graph. So I sketched it, or I actually drew it from my emulator and brought it over here. But remember your asymptotes go where these x-intercepts are. 
and then your actual cosecants are touching up there. And so you want to look and see which one does that match. This one has an upper thing really close to here and one down here like this. So totally different than that. These are obviously not it, but this is the correct one. So graph it in your calculator and try to match. Number two, secant of x plus pi over 4. So your guide function is cosine of x plus pi over 4. And again, you graph this. I got the blue one. Make your little dotted lines every place the blue thing crosses the x-axis. And then put in your red ones, and that's your actual graph. And if you're just looking at two on either side of the y-axis, this one is the one that looks most like the one we need. Okay. Um, yeah, that one doesn't that doesn't work. All right, so let's go to number three. Y equals negative two secant one half x over a one period interval. So we don't have a big graph. Um, your, gu your guide function is negative 2 cosine 0.5x. And I, I did that. And the, the period would be 0 to 2 pi. Um, let's see, over a one period interval. I think this is what it looks like. And here the red things are here. And that's the only one that it can be. So we chose A. Use your calculator to help you. Number four, same thing. This one, our guide function is sine x plus pi over 2. And um, this one does go and straddles the y-axis. So you can tell that's it and that is not it. So you have to look at what yours is doing, and then we knew it wasn't this or this. So we chose D. Number five, this is a short section. We have that rotating beacon question again, and it says find for t time is 1.54. So six, absolute value, absolute value. And let me show you where you can get absolute value. If you go to math, and over to number, the very first option is ABS, and that will give you the bars if you're on a newer calculator. It'll give you a parentheses if you're not on a new calculator. So six absolute value of one divided by cosine two pi times 1.54, and you got 6.19. It says round to one decimal place. So we've got 6.2. So hopefully that will get you through um, graphing secant and cosecant.